would be helpful. John, here's another totally unrelated question. How, how would you advise people to witness to their Mormon friends? Here's the thing you need to understand to start with. Mormons are on their way to hell. It is a damning religious system. It is so far from Christianity as to be more like paganism than Christianity. There are so many gods in Mormonism that they don't even know how many gods there are. In fact, there are more gods all the time because they make gods. When, when Mormons die, according to Mormon theology, the, the Mormon couples that have been baptized in the temple in Salt Lake and have been faithful Mormons and done what you're supposed to do, they get their own planet and they just make gods with some kind of strange celestial sex forever and ever and ever. That part of it, folks, is very much like the 70 virgins that the jihadist terrorists think they're going to meet when they blow themselves up along with the infidels. There, there are elements of, of Muslim religion in Mormonism. Worst of all, they believe that the God who created the universe is himself a created being. And they believe that Jesus the eternal God, is a created being. They believe that God had sex with a mother and they had baby Jesus born to them as a God in heaven. This thing is so polluted and convoluted. It is, um, it is idolatry of the rankest kind. It is polytheism of the worst kind. There's millions of gods all over everywhere. Uh, it, it is deviant. It is deviant in the sense that it has all these sexual overtones. And that ought to be clear to anybody who's got his eyes wide open because Joseph Smith's big deal was polygamy. You know, have sex with as many women as you can possibly have. Brigham Young you know, turned that into epic proportions. And, of course, recently the Mormons have, have tried to back away from that. Now, you have to understand this about Mormonism. Mormonism believes the Bible is corrupt by their own statements. The Bible is corrupt. The Bible is filled with error. The Bible is not trustworthy. And the Bible has to be corrected. And the correct interpretation of the Bible comes through all the writings of Joseph Smith and the Pearl of Great Price, the Doctrines and Covenants, all of that kind of stuff is designed to correct the Bible and give added revelation. So what you have is a denial then of the Trinity. They don't believe in a Trinity. A denial of the nature of God as the Eternal One. A denial of the person of Jesus Christ as the Eternal Son of God. There's even a denial of the Holy Spirit, the biblical teaching of the Holy Spirit. Denial of the veracity and truthfulness of the Bible. And then you add to this, this sexual deviancy, where you want to have multiple wives and end up on a planet somewhere making spiritual children forever. And you can see that there's some really, some really perverse things at the core of this. I think, and the reason I'm saying that, because I know the question was about evangelizing them, I think you have to understand that you're snatching a branch out of the burning. That this is a very, very, very pagan religious system. They, they have managed to do enough public relations to convince people that we ought to accept them as Christians. They even talk about the salvation by grace. Now, you've got to understand what they're saying. They believe in three heavens, for example, okay? And um, the first heaven is going to be the deprived. And you know what the deprivation of the first heaven is? You're single, Okay. That, that's where you go if you're, if you're a non-Mormon. you you, you got to be single forever. And, like, that's the worst imaginable thing, to be single forever. That'll tell you what their perceptions are. Uh, then they have a second heaven, which is a little bit better uh, for people. But they're also single forever. And then they have the highest heaven, where you get to be married and make your children forever. Uh, the low heaven is where, sort of where everybody goes the non-Mormons. They, they, they're stuck, single forever, and it's not a happy place, and it's, it's really sort of a version of hell. So all of their theology is skewed. All of it is, is warped. 
So when they talk about a salvation by grace, they're talking about getting you into that that first heaven where you're single and you suffer and it's not a happy place. That's where the grace will take you. God's just nice and lets you go there. But if you want to get to the big heaven, you earn your way there. There is, as you say, a concerted public relations effort underway right now to get evangelicals to accept Mormons as mainstream right. Christianity. And uh, I encountered some of that literature recently. They actually quote from your books. Well, I have met with the leaders of that movement. Uh, there are a couple of guys. Uh, one of them is Robert Millett, who is the main teacher of Mormon theology. Teaches which, at Brigham Young, right? Yeah, yeah, he's the head of that department. But you have to understand, that they don't have any Bible interpreters. They don't have any interpreters of Mormonism. They, they can't interpret any of it. The presiding president apostle is, he has the final say on what is true. So all they can do is affirm these things. Um, and they came to meet with me, invited me to Brigham Young, invited me. They wanted me to come into the city. They wanted me to talk to the faculty, talk to the students. And I tried to be as gracious as I could. I said, you've got a different God, a different Christ, a different gospel, different source material, and you've got a false religion. What am I going to gain by going there and having you pat me on the back like I'm some kind of a co-belligerent here. So I, I have not gone, and I've continued to correspond with these people. But to me, this is a deeply insidious issue. Now, what do you do to evangelize these people? First, you, you realize there are two things you've got to say to a Mormon. One is this. The Bible is the Word of God, and the Bible alone is the Word of God. Joseph Smith is a false prophet. Let me just take a digression. Many years ago, I read a book called Seth Speaks, written by Jane Roberts. You may remember that name. Jane Roberts is a medium. Jane Roberts is a woman who goes into a trance and contacts demons. I had no idea what this really could produce. Through Jane Roberts comes this book called Seth Speaks, this very deep, mystical musings from a demon. She goes into a trance. Her face gets contorted, and out comes all this stuff that she writes down that's so complicated and so mystical and so uh, wicked that no one human being could, could come up with it. This is demonic. And it, it produces this book, which you can buy. It's in print. That's a model for the Book of Mormon. That's a model for the Doctrine and Covenants. That's a model for the Pearl of Great Price. It's demon stuff. It's very sophisticated. It's very clever. It's not human, but it's not from God. So what you want to say to a Mormon is the Bible is the only truth. And until you believe that, there's no hope. And Jesus Christ is the one true God and the only Savior, and salvation is by grace through faith. You've got you to go to the jugular on this issue with Mormons. And I think you need to tell them that what they are caught up in is a damning system of lies. There are so many lies that have been exposed in Mormonism. You know, Joseph Smith supposedly translated those, some of those documents that he wrote from some language. Well, they now know that language didn't exist. He said that he was translating something from Egyptian. They found those documents. They're in museums now. And his translation has nothing to do with what was said in the original. There's just so many lies. It was fraud from the beginning, but it was demonic fraud. So I think you, you have to understand the seriousness of this. It's kind of neo-Gnosticism, isn't it? Well, that too, along with, you know, it's the amalgam of every foul kind of thing. Sure, they're the secret knowledge people. Yeah. When you think about America in our history, it came out of the burned over area and the Finney revivals in upstate New York, out of the twisted experiences that people were having there. That's where it got its beginning. It, it was such a threat to people that they actually killed Joseph Smith. He got murdered one day. I and mean, they, they made him move all the time, get out of town because he was so bizarre. But um, it found a, a place in America, and can you imagine it grew so powerful that it actually took over one of the states hmm. in the United States and now has gained this kind of acceptance? It's a very, very uh, successful satanic movement. It's still growing, too, and I recently read a book that uh, compared, it made a similar comparison to what you just did 
saying that the growth of the founding and growth of Mormonism is a pretty close parallel to what happened with uh, Islam. Yeah, and there are many elements. You know, the demons can only come up with so much stuff, and and their lies are going to be the same in any religion. You you see the duplication of these things. Hmm.